Hello, I'm Philip Brunel, Artistic Director and Founder of Vocal Lessons and Organist Choir Master at Plymouth Congregational Church in Minneapolis. Each day I've selected a composer who's had a role to play in these two organizations, and today it is the Australian slash English composer Malcolm Williamson. Born in 1931, passed away in 2003. From 1975 until his death, he was master of the Queen's music, which is a role that one composer is given, and this has been going on for hundreds of years, to write for festive or special occasions. It could be everything from the Queen christening a ship and having to have some music or a royal wedding, it could be anything. In 1950, Malcolm moved from Australia to England, where he was an organist, a proofreader, and a nightclub pianist. He composed seven symphonies, four piano concertos, many other concertos, operas, music for film and TV, and a lot of choral music. <clears throat> it was in the early 1970s that he came to the U.S. on a uh, tour uh, that his publisher sent him on to let people know about his music and about other English music. So one of the stops was Minneapolis, and I was called and asked, could I arrange for something with Malcolm? And I said, sure. And so we had a, um, a, a workshop for choral conductors. It was down at Westminster Presbyterian Church, and Malcolm was there. I had never met him. I didn't know him. I just knew his music a little. And it was a wonderful session in terms of him introducing us to a lot of British music that we hadn't known. Music of people like Herbert Howells, Sir Arthur Bliss, uh, many other contemporary composers. But what I do also remember is he could not conduct. And so he had, we all had the music in front of us, and he got up in front and said, well, now let's sing this piece of Herbert Howells. We all, okay. And then he looked at us and went, and we, we didn't do anything. And he said to me, Philip, why don't they sing? I said, well, you actually have to give us like a preparatory beat and then bring us in. Oh, I see. And then I said, do you want me to help you? Yes, if you would, please. And, you know, I hadn't seen the piece, but that's okay. And so we then went out. Well, Malcolm and I then became friends. And when I went to London, it was uh, in the late 70s, um, I wrote to him, said I was coming, and he wrote back and said, are there any uh, musicians here in London that you would like to meet? And I said, well, yes, actually, I would love to meet Herbert Howells, and I would like to meet the conductor, Sir Adrian Bolt. So he arranged for an afternoon that I had with each of them, and it was memorable. I've never, ever forgotten it. So he composed a number of choral pieces. The one that is from an early time, 1963, was his setting, which is so different than anyone else's setting, of that text from the Bible, worthy is the lamb that was slain. And of course, we know it because it's the last chorus in Handel's Messiah. Uh, but what Malcolm did, totally different. I think using some of his background of a nightclub pianist. So you have this kind of accompaniment to the piece. not how you think of worthy is the lamb. Of course, it was in Latin, dinus est agnus. 
So you add the solo soprano to that. It's really a wonderful little motet. We've sung it a number of times at Plymouth Church and the choir loves to sing it. He also did a set, uh, this would have been in 1976, a set of 20 responsorial psalms, meaning that there was a, a little repeat section that the audience, the congregation could learn easily and then there would be psalms in between verses, and then it kept coming back to this little response. He said it, I love in his introduction, he said, these psalm settings are intended primarily for service use wherever the congregation enjoys unrehearsed participation in the singing. And the phrase that the congregation has to sing he said, is simple and brief and can be taught in just a few minutes before the service. So we've tried that here at Plymouth Church and it does work. So you have in this one, which is Psalm 42, his setting of those words, like as the heart desireth the water brooks. So the, the congregation sings this. So you can see it has three notes to do. And then the choir part goes on. And you come back and forth with it. And finally at the end, which is a lovely little touch, is that the congregation sings it a final time and the choir comes in one measure after. So it's a little round between the two of them. In 1963, as part of a Christmas carol book in England, he was asked to compose, uh, take one of the familiar carols, and he took that old French carol, uh, which we now sing as Ding Dong, Merrily on High. And he has the alto on that melody, while the soprano, tenor, bass are like bells going. So that part's not a problem. But when you get to that part at the end, the refrain, then the soprano sings that, and the alto, tenor, bass come in on beat two. So instead of one, two, three, four, they go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And let me tell you, in a first rehearsal of that with a choir, it's a hilarious moment because there's always somebody who comes in on beat one and so there's a little time. So what he does then at the end of this, in this last verse, uh, it again reminds me of nightclub time, because the chords underneath that soprano melody are... Have a wonderful day.